Interesting case, isn't it? X marks the spot, uh, carbon looks on the front, tempered glass, dust filters, addressable RGB, everything is here. And today we're going to talk about Aerocool uh, slash uh, Thunder X3 Kronos addressable RGB case. And it looks quite interesting, especially with the front design and everything else. So let's start with the tempered glass. It's quite thick. I think it's a three millimeter thick uh, tempered glass, which you have to remove with two thumb screws. So the top one and the bottom one, there's no extra screws right here. And you don't even need the screwdriver. At least I don't need it right now. You just slide it out and here we go so removing it wasn't uh, that much of a fuss checking out everything here i can see that unfortunately we can't uh, the case doesn't support a 360 radiator on front but it would be cool if it could the good thing you could place two 280 uh, millimeter radiators uh, one at the front and one at the top so possibilities either three 120 millimeter fans on front or two 200 uh, two 140 to 120 or you could go with uh, 280 or 240 radiator on front on top you have enough clearance for placing a 280 radiator or 240 radiator and at the back if you decide you could go with uh, i think you could squeeze in uh, maybe uh, 140 or 120 millimeter radiator at the back you get a dressable RGB uh, fan which is 140 but on front you don't get anything so yeah that's the only thing since they also have a Cylon uh, power supply you get an opening here so the RGB from the power supply can be nicely seen right here the whole complete chassis looks quite nice and um, I would say spacious because you have loads of space at the top. You can place a standard ATX motherboard right here. Uh, as I said, AIO on front, AIO on top. Depends where you wish to place it. Now, taking it uh, and going at the back, you also have two thumb screws, which are quite easy uh, to remove uh, the same way as you remove for the tempered glass. So nothing uh, particularly hard. And that's it just plain steel no opening for additional air or something like that but basically you don't even need it since there isn't any fans going through the case at the back we have something uh, let's say a bit of a advanced approach when it comes to aerocool cases you have two ssd brackets which can be uh, nicely arranged and ssds can be nicely placed and you can reroute the cables quite nicely uh, two rubber grommets and additional two rubber grommets on the side and two at the top so six in all you have uh, here uh, some cable management clips that are already I would say cables are already rerouted here and at the bottom near the power supply you have a possibility to place up to three hard drives which is outstanding because lately all the cases are coming maximum with two except for the huge ones uh, here at the back we have the uh, controller for your addressable RGB fans. Now unfortunately since uh, Aerocool is still uh, keeping the standard uh, pins that are, I think these are 6 pins, uh, you do have to go with uh, their fans unless you decide to go with some third party fans and then go with a splitter for your addressable RGB connection. But also you have two addressable RGB 5 volts headers on the same controller which is quite all right I mean you can use the splitter right here and then just skip going directly to your motherboard you do need a SATA power to connect and control and if you go with the uh, fans from Aerocool you can control them by directly attaching the PWM header from the controller and the addressable RGB header also from the controller now talking on the top uh, part where the IO ports are you have the power on button you have the reset button you have the LED button two USB 3.0 and you have two 3.5 millimeter jacks for your headset and for your microphone now you must be already wondering 
what are the temperatures inside the case. So let's build uh, some PC inside and check out the thermals. Couple of things that could be found in the accessory box is the GPU anti-seg holder and additional uh, canal that can be placed at the back for better cable management, I would say. So basically you can see that it has loads of space at the top to place a 240 or 280 radiator as I said at the beginning of the video. And placing three fans on front really gives a nice airflow through the case and basically better temperatures. Now in this build uh, I use the RTX 2070 and the AMD Ryzen 3 3300X uh, just because I was trying to go with the same configuration so the CPU can be placed in my benchmarks for future videos. Now uh, this build, uh, this case uh, has loads of space and I would say that shame that they didn't place a larger cutout at the front to place a 360 radiator on front that would be uh, really cool. All in all, I wouldn't say anything against uh, the case. It has everything that you need and I would say even the the possibility to place fans in different uh, positions because you have different holes on the front. So this is really cool because at front I ha um, at first I have to admit I was a bit uh, confused with the holes and how to place the fans since uh, the holes where you actually put the screws in to tie up the fans are a bit the same way as the uh, whole uh, front uh, design. Now for the temperatures we had, um, I had loads of uh, testing going on and in um, synthetic tests for the 3300X with Cylon 4 addressable RGB CPU tower cooler the average was somewhere around 68 to 69 and in gaming was 65 celsius degrees while the gpu went from 63 to 70 celsius degrees depending if it was synthetic benchmark or if it was actual gaming this gpu doesn't go above 70 celsius degrees and this kind of test concludes that this case uh, does have it all so uh, nice airflow, uh, the CPU tower cooler does okay job on the 3300X and loads of space. You can't go with a custom loop, you could manage something, but it will cover most likely the RAMs or something like that. But AIOs or CPU tower coolers are the possibility to go here. So guys, uh, I'm really satisfied, first of all, with the design. It's not something that I would go with usually. I usually go with something with a slick front but the aggressive design and the X and the possibility to adjust the LEDs with the top uh, button is a really cool option for you guys if you want to go with single color or RGB madness as you can see right now. So interesting looks, interesting design and definitely cool temperatures CPU can go a bit lower if it was a different CPU tower cooler, but all in all, definitely a cool way to uh, go with the budget case, with the design, with the uh, cooling and everything else. The only shame, you do need to get additional fans for the front since you only get one 140 at the back. So guys, yeah, this is it. Uh, Irocool Kronos, which you can check out the price uh, in the description below with the links which will di directly uh, forward you to the Amazon store which you can buy it at your, uh, let's say, local Amazon. And uh, if you like the video, don't forget to click the thumbs up button, subscribe and leave a comment what you think about the front panel design. I'm really curious about your thoughts. So thank you guys for watching today's video. Today was a uh, Aerocool Kronos case and I'll see you in another one. Thank you, bye bye.